This lesson is on adding and subtracting polynomials. When we add polynomials together, what we are concerned about doing is finding like terms. And a like term simply means that it has the exact same variable or variables and the exact same exponent. So in my first example, a 5x squared and a 2x squared are like terms because they are both x squared values. The minus x would not have a like term to combine it with because there's no x value in my second polynomial. And the plus 6 and the minus 3 are like terms because they're both constants. There are different methods for identifying like terms. Um, some people like to, for instance, put a box around ones that match up and then maybe a triangle around another pair that matches up, etc. And when you're dealing with a plus in between, we really can drop those parentheses immediately. So I've got a 5x squared and a minus x and a plus 6 and a plus 2x squared and a minus 3. And I'm simply going to put together terms that belong together. So I'm going to start with the 5x squared and the 2x squared and those combine to 7x squared because this was a plus sign in between. I'm going to always write my answer in standard form, so I'm then going to put my minus x second, even though I was not able to combine it with anything. And then the last term is the 6 and the negative 3, and when I combine those together, I get a positive 3. So this is my final answer, 7x squared minus x plus 3. Make sure you write it in standard form. When you subtract polynomials, you really want to do the same thing, except we have to remember to KFC, which of course means keep, flip, change, or leave, change, opposite, or ching, ching, or whatever you use to remind yourself when we subtract, you have to change the um, sign. So here I've got a minus sign on the outside of a parenthesis. So it's a kind of like distributing a negative, but I'm basically going to make this plus and then change each sign after it. So now I have 3a to the fourth plus 5a, a minus 6. This is now a negative 2a to the fourth, so I can write it as negative 2a or minus 2a. This is now a negative 2a or minus 2a and this is now a plus 3. Once I have it in this form, notice I did not write any parentheses, and now I'm just going to combine like terms. So 3a and minus 2a gives me positive 1a to the fourth, which I will write as a to the fourth. In standard form then, I would go to my a values, so plus 5a and minus 2a combined to plus 3a. You can cross them off as you go if that helps you to keep track. Minus 6 and plus 3 gives me a minus 3 for my constant. Here are a couple for us to try together. Notice that these are written a little bit differently. This, says this is the function f of x and this is the function g of x. And they're asking me to find f plus g of x. f plus g of x means take my f of x function and add my g of x function. So here's my f of x function and my g of x function. I'm just going to add those together. We know with addition, those parentheses don't really mean anything. So I could rewrite it without parentheses, but I'm just going to combine like terms. 4x to the third and 1x to the third gives me 5x to the third. Now I'm going to move on to my next degree down, which is squared. I've got a 2x squared, but nothing to combine it with, so plus 2x squared. I've got a minus x, but nothing to combine it with, so minus x. And then minus 5 and plus 3 combines to minus 2. That's my final answer. For my second one, notice this is f minus g of x, and so I'm going to subtract g. When I subtract, I've got a minus on the outside of parentheses. So again, I'm going to keep flip change or ching ching to make it plus and then change every sign after that. If it's helpful, go ahead and rewrite those terms so there's no confusion as to if it's a plus or a minus. So I've got a negative x to the third, a positive x, and a negative 3. 
Anytime you have a minus, you can write it as a plus negative and vice versa, so just keep that in mind. Now I'm going to combine like terms. 4x to the third and negative 1x to the third is 3x to the third. Plus 2x squared does not combine with anything. Plus x does not combine with anything. And minus 5 combines with minus 3 to give me minus 8. Go ahead and do this one on your own and then see how you did. For my first example, I've got 2x cubed plus 4x squared plus 7, and I'm adding 2x cubed minus 3x plus 7, oh, sorry, minus 7. And notice I didn't even bother writing it in parentheses because I knew there was going to be a plus sign in between and I would have dropped the plus sign anyway. Combining like terms, I get 4x to the third plus 4x squared. Again, if it helps you to cross them off as you go, you may do that. Minus 3x, and then my plus 7 and minus 7 cancel, so that's my final answer. For my subtraction question, I'm going to recopy f of x, but I'm subtracting the entire g of x. Again, not a bad idea to go through and ching ching right at the beginning. So all of those are going to change. And once I've done that, then basically the uh, parentheses are not necessary. So now I'm taking 2x cubed and negative 2x cubed, which of course cancels. I've got a positive 4x squared that doesn't combine with anything. I've got a positive 3x that doesn't combine with anything. And I have a plus 7 and a plus 7, which combine to give me 14. I wanted to throw in here a question dealing uh, with fractions, so adding and subtracting polynomials that contain fractions. When I'm doing this, I know typically when we've had a question like this, we've had to make all of the denominators the same, and that's not the case for a question like this. So I only need these two denominators to be the same to combine them. These two need to be the same, which they're not fractions anyway, but in order to combine them. And then these two need to be the same. So I'm gonna take my one half and I want it to be the same denominator as this. And if it helps you, go ahead and recopy those values. So one half x and I've got a plus, um, oops, I'm not even gonna do that, let's go back. I'm gonna change this by multiplying by two on top and on bottom to two fourths. So I'm gonna call this two fourths x squared and I'm gonna put the minus three fourths x squared next. And you can do that anytime you want if you'd like to recopy. And then I'm gonna put my minus three x from here and my minus three x from here. And lucky me, these two already have a common denominator. So I'm gonna put my plus one fourth and my minus three-fourths. Again, if it helps you to write it out like this, that's fine. If you would rather just go right to the end and write the answer, that's fine too. Again, just make sure these two values have the same denominator. So two-fourths minus three-fourths is negative one-fourth x squared. Two, again, you can ching ching, two plus negative three is negative one. Minus three x and minus three x gives me minus six x. And a positive one and a minus three gives me negative two fourths. So either minus two fourths or plus negative two fourths. And hopefully we see that two fourths can be reduced. So my final answer, I would actually reduce the two fourths to one half and that would be my final answer. For our last question, this is the exact same question as before. I've just stuck a negative in between. Um, again, when I have a minus in front of parentheses, I'm going to ching, 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 so it changes every single sign. I'm still gonna make this 2 fourths. So this time I'm not going to recopy. 2 fourths x squared plus 3 fourths x squared is 5 fourths x squared. Please don't feel the need to turn that into 1 and 1 fourth x squared because it's not necessary negative 3x and positive 3x, those two end up canceling this time. And plus 1 fourth and plus 3 fourths gives me plus 4 fourths. And of course, 4 fourths is just 1. 
So that is my final answer.